Your morning sets the tone for everything that follows. It's those first few moments, those simple habits that can make or break your day. And if you're on a weight loss journey, it's not about making massive changes overnight. It's the small, consistent actions that compound over time. If we haven't met before, I'm Maria and I'm a registered dietitian and I have helped hundreds of people successfully lose weight. And today I'm sharing nine morning habits that are quick, doable and designed to fit into any routine. So let's make the first hour of your day the most powerful one. Now this first habit might surprise you because it's not about waking up at 5 a.m. We've all seen these early morning starts glamorized on social media with this idea that if you're not in this 5 a.m. club, you're not truly dedicated to wellness. But remember that what works for others may not work for you. And it's time to stop comparing to other influencers online and start prioritizing what your body actually needs because we all have different work schedules and lifestyles to work around. While I love waking up early, it shouldn't come at the expense of your sleep. And sleep really is crucial for weight loss. Lack of sleep can increase your appetite and your cravings for these high calorie foods. And if you're not getting enough rest, waking up then too early might be working against your weight loss goals. If you want to shift your routine to be more of a morning person, you need to do it gradually. Start going to bed 15 to 30 minutes earlier and waking up 15 to 30 minutes earlier. Lying in bed at 9 p.m. but not falling asleep until 11 p.m. does not count as rest. And at the weekends, if you can, try not to have your wake and sleep schedule shift too much. And think of it this way, your body has a battery just like your phone does. It can recharge either through sleep, sleep will give you energy, or food, food will also give you energy. So if you're recharging that battery and you're not doing so with sleep, the next day your body is going to look for energy from something else, which is food. And we've all heard that when people are sleep deprived, they eat more calories the next day. And studies have shown that this can be up to as much as five to 600 calories for those who don't get a proper night's sleep. And if you're trying to lose weight, this is very significant. So sometimes the best thing that you can do is getting that little bit of extra sleep. And how much do we need it depends on every individual, but generally, roughly speaking, we need around seven to eight hours per night. And women need more sleep than men. Now I'm gonna pause here and ask that if you're enjoying the video so far, I would really appreciate it if you hit the red subscribe button below. And give the video a thumbs up because it really helps support my channel. Plus, if you're looking for healthy, high protein recipe ideas, I'd recommend following me over on Instagram. Now, one of the next habits that you can adopt is weighing yourself in the mornings. Now this does not necessarily need to be every single day, but self-monitoring is a key part of any successful weight loss intervention. By weighing yourself, you can keep on track of your weight loss or your weight maintenance goals. If the number starts to creep up after a few days of overindulging, it can give you that extra push to get in a workout or prep your meals for the next day. It's like sticking to a budget. If you overspend one week, you need to know so that you can adjust. Otherwise, those small oversights will start to add up. But I do want you to keep in mind that weight loss does not happen overnight. So daily weigh-ins are not 100% accurate. And for some, they can be discouraging. From my experience, men tend to do better with daily weight checks than women because they have less hormonal fluctuations and tend to have less of an emotional attachment to the scales. But if it works for you, stepping on the scales daily, weekly, or fortnightly can be a great way to help boost your motivation and your self-control. And studies do show that daily weight checks are linked with greater weight loss. For example, there was one small study and they found that people who weighed themselves daily, they lost 13 pounds more in six months compared to those who weighed themselves less often. And another study reported that those who stepped on the scale daily, they lost an average of 9.7 pounds over a two year period. Whereas those who only weighed themselves once a month, they actually gained 4.6 pounds. So if you are weighing yourself for best results, you want to weigh yourself first thing in the morning after you've used the bathroom, but before you've had anything to eat or drink. But remember that your weight will fluctuate day to day. So don't let this dishearten you. And if you don't like to weigh yourself, there are other ways to self-monitor. It could be that every month you do a three-day food log and you write down everything you eat. Or it could be have a habit log, have three daily habits for yourself and self-monitor with how you are doing them. Now you don't need to eat breakfast as soon as you wake up if that doesn't work for you. But if you are hungry and ready to break the fast, AKA breakfast, what you eat here can set the course for the entire day. So it's not just simply about having breakfast, it's about what your breakfast is made up of. And this will determine whether or not you feel satisfied 
until lunch. Or if you'll be heading to the vending machine for a mid-morning snack. And the key habit here is choosing a high protein breakfast. This can really help cut out cravings and help in weight loss. Because we have studies comparing eating a normal breakfast and a breakfast high in protein. And the high protein breakfasts were associated with less fat gain fewer cravings after meals and a reduced daily calorie intake. And we've all heard about Ozempic, the weight loss drug. And while one of the ways this works is by suppressing your hunger hormone. And interestingly, protein can do the same thing. Now this doesn't mean that you can't have your usual cereal or toast, but you want to consider adding a good protein source here with it, like your eggs or cottage cheese or nuts and chaya or hemp seeds, for example. These will all help to get your day off to a good start. And in fact, some breads are actually not a bad source of protein. I had a bread recently from the store and each slice had six grams of protein. So two slices of bread and two eggs, I was doing very well. But many people think that high protein means low carb and it really does not necessarily have to be. Now I typically recommend to try and have at least 20 grams of protein at breakfast. If you are in a larger body or an older adult, you might want to have a bit more. Now exercise and movement is great regardless of when you do it. But I do find that most people who succeed the most with their weight loss goals, they do some form of movement first thing. But even if you just simply put on your shoes, get out the door and go for a two minute walk down the road, turn around and come back in the mornings, I do think that this is hugely helpful because it's not just the exercise itself. We often think of exercise as just a way to burn calories, but that's not how it really benefits us. If you do this, you get outside, you get some fresh air, you get some morning light, and this works absolute wonders for your mental health and having good mental health feeling positive feeling like you can take on the day works wonders for making adhering to and making healthy choices that bit easier and who knows maybe once you've gone out the door for your two minute walk you'll actually feel like you might be able to go a little bit further so don't feel like you have to be at the gym at 6 a.m if that doesn't work for you but try to get in some movement even if it is just some gentle stretching in your pajamas by the window i do find myself personally that if I do set a goal though to go to the gym or do some form of structured exercise, I like to do it first thing because then I can chill in the evening. And I've ticked a big item off my to-do list for the day first thing in the morning. But this is very individual. Some people prefer exercising in the afternoons. Now, if you're not able to get outside, opening up the curtains and letting in some sunlight is a great way to start the day. And believe it or not, even moderate levels of light at certain times in the day can have an influence on your weight. I even find myself, I know when I'm in hurricane season here in Bermuda, I get into a very bad habit of leaving the shutters closed all of the time because it's easier than opening and closing them. But when I do make that effort to open them, it makes such a big difference to just how you feel and your mood that day. And we do know that sunlight is great for vitamin D. And vitamin D has been linked to almost every aspect of health now at this stage. But one of them now is weight management. And there was a study that followed almost 5,000 older women for four years. And what they found was that higher levels of vitamin D were associated with less weight gain. And exposure to sunlight is a great way to help towards meeting your vitamin D needs. But that does not mean you shouldn't also be taking a vitamin D supplement. It's one of the supplements that I most frequently recommend as a dietitian, because most people do need it. Because the amount of sun exposure that you need can vary based on your skin type, the location and the time of year. And a fun fact for all my Irish subscribers, pale Irish redheads are amongst the best at synthesizing vitamin D, probably because we need it the most. Now this habit will really, really help you do all of the other habits. And it's arguably one of the most difficult. Definitely one I struggle with. And this is to avoid checking your phone for the first 30 minutes after you wake up. It's so easy to get caught up in email, social media, or the news, the very moment that you open your eyes. But this can really trigger stress and distraction from the get-go. By staying off your phone, you give yourself the space to ease into the day. With more intention and with more focus, you can use this time to stretch or to eat a healthy breakfast, or even take a few minutes for some quiet reflection. And it sets a nice positive tone for your morning. This helps you feel more in control and less reactive to external pressures right from the start. Now, every year on repeat, I have set a new year goal to start some form of meditation or mindfulness. And every year I typically fail, but it is really worth trying as it has been shown to help with maintaining a healthy weight and promote healthy eating habits. 
there was one really big analysis that pooled results from 19 studies and they found that mindfulness-based interventions increased weight loss and they reduced obesity-related eating behaviours. And there are so many different mindfulness apps on the market right now that hopefully you should be able to find one that works for you. And hopefully 2025 will be the year that I finally conquer this one. But if you are like me and you really struggle with trying to sit still and be mindful, I have found other ways of being mindful that do really still help for me. For example, just having my morning coffee in a very present, mindful, relaxed way. Even if it's just for five minutes, I don't need to close my eyes, I don't need to sit and cross my legs, but I will, stay off my phone, I will stay in the moment and I will just focus on having and enjoying my coffee. And this can really help ground you and make you feel calm before you start into your day. And then ideally you really want to be bringing mindfulness into your eating practices, like not just your morning coffee but at breakfast, at lunch and at dinner. Throughout the day your meals should be dedicated moments. Don't be eating your breakfast at your desk or your lunch on your laptop. Now making the effort to plan and pack your lunch ahead of time can be a simple way to make better food choices and increase weight loss. A large study with over 40,000 people found that meal planning was associated with again improved diet quality and a decreased risk of excess body fat. In fact, those who ate home cooked meals at least five times per week were 28% less likely to be overweight than those who only ate home cooked meals three times or less each week. So even if you are rushing out the door and you won't be home for lunch, bringing a homemade lunch with you, you can have a homemade meal outside of the house. Maybe make a double portion at dinner so you can then have it for lunch the next day. Or if you really have nothing healthy at home to pack for lunch that day, try to make a plan in the morning for how you're going to work around this. This does happen to me a lot. And when it does, I try to leave to go to the hospital five or 10 minutes earlier. I know there's a store that does lovely salads that I can stop into on my way to work. I can pick up that salad and then put it in the fridge and work. So I have a healthy option there for me because it's just better than the other options that might be in your work staff canteen. But if you take a little bit of time to plan ahead in the morning, it can help you navigate around obstacles that you might face later on in the day. If you can, try to set aside an hour or two each week so that you can plan and prepare your meals. So then in the morning, all you need to do is grab your lunch and go. Now the recommendations around fiber, they vary for different parts of the world. But in general, adults need to get around 30 grams of fiber every single day. And 30 grams of fiber is a lot. So if you want to be on track to meet this target, you really do need to be getting a decent amount of fiber at breakfast. If you don't, you're probably not going to reach your fiber goal for that day. And I do think that breakfast is a meal where there is a lot of opportunity to get a good bit of fiber in here. And from research, we know the people who eat more fiber are slimmer than those who don't. So not only does it keep your digestion running smoother, but it helps keep you feeling more full, which can prevent overeating later on. Fiber also slows down the absorption of sugars into the bloodstream, which keeps your energy levels much more stable. And this helps avoid any mid-morning crash where you might typically be reaching for a sugary treat. And some great sources of morning fiber are things like your oats, your whole grains, your chia seeds, your lint seeds, and your nuts and your seeds. And really, I think that you can sprinkle a handful of nuts and seeds, which are very good for fiber, over most things. You can sprinkle them over porridge, you can sprinkle them over yogurt, but they're also really nice over toast to give a little bit of crunch. You just need to get a little bit creative. And then it's trying to add in some fruit or berries here too. And this can be done with both sweet and savory breakfast options. It's just about making that tiny little bit more of an effort. So making a few small changes to your morning habits can be an easy and effective way to increase weight loss. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you're definitely going to enjoy my video about the seven effective habits of people who lose weight and keep it off. I'll leave a link on the screen. And if you've made it this far to thank you for watching, I have a free recipe ebook, which I've leaved linked in the description box below. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you again next week. Thanks for watching.